good evening and welcome to All About Sport, live from the top of the town studios, Conley Street, Cavan, on your local channel, cavantv.com. Each week we will continue to include a wide variety of sport from all around County Cavan. And if you would like your sport featured on All About Sport, simply contact drumlinmedia at gmail.com. This show will be live on the internet on cavantv.com every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. and on Smith's Cablevision in Cavan Town. Cavan TV features tennis this week and our reporter visits Cavan Law and Tennis Club on Farnham Street Cavan to find out more about the club and what they have on offer. Yesterday's were at the magnificent settings of the Cavan Law and Tennis Club with Bernice and Cotto. Um, Maybe we'll start with Bernice, um, your chairperson, and this club dates back quite a while. Maybe you'd outline some of its history. Um, yeah, um, Cavan Road Tennis Club, it was one of the, the older clubs in, I think, in Ireland at the time. It was one of the first clubs. It was originally a lawn, it was a lawn course, just three at the front. We have, um, and then we had the facilities here, the clubhouse. And then in later years, we built on the courts at the back. And throughout that period, they also changed from grass to tarmac. So we had the tarmac courts for quite a long time. And then we were very fortunate to get the uh, Sports Capital Program grant aid. And we were able to resurface the courts. And they're now a rubber rights court, and they're all weather. And we have five courts, and they're all floodlit. So it means that you, know, you can play at night time late into the evening and um, you can play in all weather really unless it's really, really, really <coughs> raining and that. Sometimes in the winter the courts are prone to, you know, a little bit of frost and they can be quite slippy. So just for, you know, health and safety, we advise not to play on them. But other than that, they can be played all year round. Right. But yeah. the facilities now with, with the number of courts, it must mean that you have uh, uh, quite a, a membership. We do. We're very, we're very lucky. We have a great membership. Um, the senior members, we have about 50 to 60 adults that are playing on a regular basis. We have over, we have over 120 juniors that are members and then we would have about 20 families that are members as well. So it is very busy in the summertime obviously because the juniors really play during the summer. They don't really play during the winter months because of school and all of that. But um, that's when the adults would take off. The adults would tend to play, you know, throughout the winter. Um, and also during the winter as well, we do let the we do let the schools into the facilities. So you know this year St Clair's, St Phelan's, and the Cavan and Bowen School all have their PE program up in the tennis club. They um, they use the facilities, you know, as part of their PE program. They come in, the kids play, and actually one school uh, hired one of the coaches. We recommended a coach, and they hired out the coach and the yeah. professional tennis coach. I saw that, that um, your pricing structure is, is, is very flexible. It means that, that you can even hire a court or, or just come individually and then you have family membership and, and um, different levels of membership. So it, it means that it, uh, even a person on, on low budgets can, can access that. It's, yeah, it's very, it's very accessible for you know, people on, um, or families especially with low incomes, especially in the current climate. You know, they're, um, it's, it's very accessible. Our family membership is 240 euro, and our senior membership is 120 euro, and our junior membership is 100 euro. Right. And that's, that's for the full year. Right. And well, apart from the club itself playing and, and your members playing here, Cahill, I believe you uh, work on organising um, inter uh, club competitions and going to other club uh, open days, so our open competitions. Uh, how well does Cavan fare out in, in those events? Well, I started I started playing maybe about three years ago, and uh, Cavan haven't been they, they weren't entering many of the tournaments at that stage. They have back about ten years ago. They were very very uh, lively club, but um, there was a new kind of energy to them. And it just basically three years ago when I started, the membership started growing, and all of a sudden people started playing more. And I was kind of lucky because when I did start, that there was a lot of people to play against. And then people just got a little bit, you know, a bit of confidence into them and started to travel to the surrounding counties playing their opens. They're all on the Tennis Ireland website, you know, it's just a matter of looking them up and seeing which ones you think you might be able to enter. And it's just take a ball by the horns and go for it, you know. And 
We do the likes of uh, maybe Mullagar, Longford, uh, Kells, Stack Allen, Irvinstown, Enniskillen. And where Cabin is located, it's basically within an hour, an hour and 15 minutes drive to these, to these tournaments. And all the senior tournaments take part, or they, they, they're on basically at even time. So you just, you're leaving them at 7 and leaving them back by maybe half 10, 11. So, yeah, so. Um, they do pretty well. They, they start out, there wasn't many uh, travelling to them, but now there's quite a few. We've got maybe 30, 20 or 30 senior members going to play in different opens in the surrounding counties. Yeah. And each year they're improving, people are getting more confident and playing better. And plus, you don't have to be a great tennis, a really good tennis player to play in them. There's, there's categories for all, for everybody, you know. There's A, B and C categories, that's the way they are up here. Right, so it can be somewhat, while it's not a social club, it can um, have a social element to it. And not a, a, there is competition level, but there's also levels that aren't just pure competition. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, go travel to the Opens, you're going over there and you're meeting new people. And there's people there for recreational purposes. There's people there because they're, they just want to try and keep fit. There's people there playing very competitively as well. So you get two ends of the spectrum. You can right. cover all, all sorts of tennis players. So you don't, you, you wouldn't have to be freaked out about going to these tournaments. You know, you could go and they'll find a level for you and slot you into there. And, you play the competition from there. And likewise, would you go on to other clubs? I, I presume those in turn come here for the open competition, so you must have a, a great spectacle on, on your open day. Yeah, we do. I mean, we started the open about, two, we, did, we ran the second open this summer, just gone by in May. And the first one, we kind of promoted the club and built up to the open. We wanted to let everybody know that we were. Uh, starting the Open again. It hadn't been played in, in 10 years, I think it was 10 years since the last Open was done. So, uh, everyone knew Calvin Club existed, but it just wasn't. Right, right. The, the, it didn't have the energy until, we, until the last three or four years. And uh, we would go down, they support, we support the clubs in the surrounding uh, counties and they come back and in return they support us. Right. So, well, well Calvin TV, as you know, streamed one of the, the um, the opens live to the web and there was very positive responses. Even you got some feedback from different countries from members that did, family yeah. members that were viewing. Well in particular one of the guys that was in the final last year, uh, I think he was Czech, he was a Czech guy. Uh, and uh, his whole family watched the final on Cabin TV and they were telling him how badly he played when he lost. But uh, he loved the idea of being able to, you know, ring them up and say, right, I've gone on in five minutes, I've gone on in whenever it was, ten minutes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, they tuned in and watched the whole final on TV. And, and it was fabulous because uh, you had all the flags around the, the courts from all the nationalities of people that were playing there. And Calvin was having uh, a hospital and, and other industry around the area. They were quite a diverse population of, of people in, uh, as members in the club. Yeah, one of our members thought it would be really nice, uh, a nice idea to, to, to get all the flags and put them up. And it, it, like, when you look at it driving by, it looks like there's something happening. And uh, it does draw attention to the people to come up. And even people that are playing, coming up and just watch it. And we have, we have all kinds of nationalities playing tennis. And it's the same throughout the whole country. And uh, it does bring people together. And it's a great way to interact with, with, with different cultures, different people, and uh, see everybody's style of tennis. Yeah, it is a sport that's played in, in fact in every country in the world yeah, and, exactly. and, and it has good viewerships on, on the web. On, on the different levels, uh, Bernice, would you have key members within the committee that, that would look after would say, juveniles or, or um, beginners or different levels? We do. What we have done is we have, uh, we have a structure in place. We have, our, we have our main committee and then we have broken it up into a senior committee and a junior committee. So the junior committee takes responsibilities for the juniors and they would look after organising junior events and you know getting junior coaching in place and yeah, tennis camps and you know just monitoring the structure of the juniors. Then we have the senior committee who would you know look after running the competitions amongst the adults and looking after the social nights and you know organising the cabin open and you know keeping the links with the other clubs as well and keeping in touch and organising home and away games. And then we have the main committee who would you know come together to make you know the, the big decisions and look at the progress of the senior and the juniors? Yeah, but uh, holding holding uh, competitions here in the club yeah. is a daunting enough task uh, yeah. at all levels because you have you have um, catering, you have um, changing rooms, you have so you have a, you have to have a lot in place uh, for competition apart from just the, the basic club things that, yeah. that you're engaging in. Yeah. 
Um, the main competition that we run each year is the Calvin Senior Open Week, and there's a lot of involvement in that. There's the catering. We also have to collect sponsorship. There'd be the prizes we'd have to organise. A lot of behind the scenes work that people don't really organise. You know, we also had to put the our tournament on the website so that people could enter online. And we also had to have somebody to take the online entries. So we've been very lucky that not it's not only left to committee members and an awful lot of our members to take part take part and help us out. Mm -hmm. You know, the ladies would come together and they'd help in the kitchen and a couple of the guys that are very good with IT would help out with the computer and everybody, you know, comes together and it's great for them. Team effort. All right, right, yeah. yeah. And, and I know as you said, the sponsorship area, you have yeah. the, the different sponsors chatted around the, the outer perimeter, so presumably without those key sponsors, um, it would be a lot more difficult to organise events. Well, it would be a non-runner if, if yeah. we didn't have our sponsors. They're, they're key to, you know, keeping... Keep and every year they come forward and, uh, you know, it's... it's right, it's, right. Yeah. And, and would you have people specifically within the, the club that, that either would know them or deal with them or liaise with them or, or you know, because the sponsors is important that yeah. they feel that, that, that the club has given something to them or... or we do. There, there's one person in particular that would look after the sponsors, and uh, she, she, you know, she would know them quite well, and she, you know, gathers them up and, you know, invites them in. And on our, you know, senior open week there, uh, all the sponsors were invited in for the for the finals day to have a look and see the standard of tennis. And a few of the sponsors did come in this year, so it was great to see that, and uh, they've taken an interest in it. And in fact, some of the sponsors, their you know, wives or children have come to the tennis club as part of it. All right, and they right. didn't realise we were here in the town and they were like, what a great opportunity. So mm. we've actually gained members out of it as well. So it's been yeah, so, so it's, it's a better buy-in from the sponsors and the fee that they've been appreciated yeah. and, and yeah. a better level of support to the club. Definitely. Definitely. Right, right. Yeah. And also, um, with, the, with, say, with junior and seniors, um, and and would say training. Would you have specific people involved in the club for for training? We uh, even at different levels, would you have people? We, we do definitely. At the moment, we we don't have other clubs would have a coach. Unfortunately, our club is just not big enough to have the, the own coach. We're just not lucky enough. But in our neighbouring clubs, throughout the links that we've met with the other clubs, we have met with coaches and they have offered their services. Now we have three coaches at the moment. Uh, one man from Kells and we've two, uh, a man and a woman then from Irvingstown and they've been, the three of them now are a great addition to this club and only for them they're really great with the juniors and they bring the juniors on and then for the seniors we organise our own private coaching as well. We have a, we have a guy in Mullingar and we've also a guy up in Irvingstown so they will either travel to the club to do the coaching or we can travel to them. Right, right. And I suppose with the with television, uh, with the likes of the French Open and and um, uh, the Australian and, and Wimbledon, and now this year you have the Olympics. Tennis was was a prominent sport within the the, um, the Olympics. Would you find that that you, you, you'd have people maybe coming out after a tournament, or you'd have a um, higher attendance, or? We say that every year. You always know when Wimbledon's being played because yeah. everybody comes out for a game of tennis. You know, they're getting cheap when they're on the course, and you see loads of new faces coming up and yeah. just, just playing, and we might recognise them. But then everyone's welcome to come up, you know, and it's all. So you have strawberries from Wexford, and you have cream from from Virginia here oh, waiting yeah, for it's for all. Ready, ready to dish out, you know. <laughs> Yeah, because that's nearly associated. People have different associations with with, with different sports, and uh, I think because it, is it is that mostly a Wimbledon sort of thing that you have the 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 cream, the, the strawberries and cream, or do do other we we'll say the Roland Garros or any of those ones have a similar thing? Well, I don't know. Maybe in Australia they just have the the lager, do they? I'm not sure. <laughs> what they, they could do. I don't know what to do in France. Maybe frozen eggs or something. I don't know. <laughs> But I think it's dating back to when tennis was basically played by, you know, the, the super rich and wealthy and, you know, uh, these days uh, you'd be happy, you know, like, I mean, everybody's playing tennis these days. It's a sport for, for everyone, right, right. You know, so it's not <coughs> that's what you'd find here, so, so there's no special treats when, when we come here? No, the... no, no, don't think it's special treatment, everyone's treating the same, <laughs> these parts. Also, now you have the, the um, extra activities within the, the club that is, is the top, the top alone, I suppose, um, when you have families, uh, members that, that 
that would have a diverse interest. So obviously the club now caters for those to, to help them to, to, to work with with the club. You know, um, you know things that you'd organise here within the club. Yeah, well, there is. There's there's extra activities that go on as well. Like I mean, some of our members arrange different things like maybe uh, hill walking or canoeing or kayaking or they've done archery. I mean, they've climbed the Cooka Mountains. You know, people just are interested not only in tennis but just basically keeping fit. So it's built uh, around the membership of the club. Yeah. Right. It is. Yeah. We we one guy in particular who's you know he, he's great. He's very fond of organising events like that, and he just gets around to the members and gather whoever's available to come out maybe for a night kayaking. You know, so. Yeah, so, so there's a, apart from the, the tennis social side of things, there's a, a bonding with, with, with members and, and, and I suppose that you even engage maybe in some fundraising for things at, at different times of the year. Or we do, yeah, we do, yeah. We usually hold a quiz each year, an annual quiz. And we also maybe, you know, hold raffle. Last year we raffled um, tickets for the All-Ireland Final. Football All right, right. So, you know, there is good fundraising. We do try and fundraise each year as well. Yeah. yeah. And, well, the clubhouse here, um, it's it's basically about half the size maybe of a tennis court. It's still, still a very uh, good facility to have. Um, would you have social nights at different times in the year? Yeah, definitely. We, we usually organise about maybe two or three, maybe four. It depends on the weather. But when the home is there, when the teams come to play us for friendly, that's obviously a very social night. There'll be, you know, some food and maybe some wine and that. But we do organise some social nights. We've had, we've organised a Spanish night in the past. You know, oh, yeah. where one of our members was Spanish, and we got her with the help of other people as well to right. Spanish food. So right, we had a night right. here where we all sampled a bit of Spanish food, and then there was another night then where we we had a Chinese night. Oh, right. I did the sangria and the, oh, yeah. and, yeah. and the rice wine. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, did, yeah. The paella. Oh. Yeah. Uh, well, there, I suppose, you need yeah. to, to, and it makes them probably feel more at home within the club also. Definitely. Um, uh, yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's all about involving everybody. I mean, everyone's paying the same membership, so you want to give, if anyone has any idea, you know, they can as a member of what maybe we could do. We're always open to, to uh, ideas, you know, as well. You just want to try and keep it. Keep it taking over, keep it interesting, not only with the tennis end of it, but also stuff at the social end of it as well. Right. You know? like well, we have some photographs, you, you brought along some photographs um, in, a, in a sideshow presentation, and maybe we'll look at those now and it'll give a flavour of, of what the club is about.
that this is um, really a lot happening, and it's, it's great that you capture all those things on on on. Um, yeah, we have the guys out when the opens are on. <coughs> we have the guys out with cameras. You know, we like because we have the website on goal now as well, um, Catalog Tennis Club. And basically, we we like to just keep the whole thing interesting. You know, maybe someone might see, oh, I played that shot badly, or oh, that mean take. I must do. I must try and sort out that swing. You know, it's always uh -huh. nice to see what way you hit the ball because you never really know when you're when you're playing yourself. You can't really see yourself playing. Of course, of course, yeah. And I suppose families, they, 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 there'd be a tradition of 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 family members um, being members of the club that you, you look back on the records you'd have parents and, and sometimes maybe grandparents as part of the club and, um, maybe winning competitions so that so there's a, a follow on year on year or, or generation on generation within the club definitely yeah definitely um, can't think of anybody at the moment now who would be but there would be yeah there there is, is. yeah I noticed some names on, on some of the photographs on the wall now, they may not be, be part of the site, but um, so on the, um, you have some interesting developments in, in the club I believe um, about to take place, maybe you, you want to go through some of those? Uh, we do, this year um, we decided to fund the sports capital programme, uh, we decided to fund in two for a sport hall at Paddy, we have got a um, We've got wind sand up the back here, just beyond the, the fifth court, and it's not big enough for a full size tennis court, but it is big enough for this new sport called Paddy, and we've put two courts, so it means that we can accommodate more people, obviously, but we're also introducing a new sport. Now, this sport is it's very big in Spain at the moment, and the UK, and Europe, and South America, but it actually hasn't made its way to Ireland yet. There's, I think there's a crowd in Dublin that are going to hopefully take off with it. But Paddy is basically like tennis, except it would be with a mixture of squash as well. So there's like, there is a half-size tennis court, a half-size oh, right. court, and it'll have a net in it. And the ball would be in play, but the ball would be able to hit off the side and the back structures of the court. So it would be very active and very fit. And it would suit somebody that may not... Um, that may not want to play on a full size tennis court. So know. it's physically demanding. I noticed some of the, the matches yes. earlier this evening, yeah. it's, it's, it is physically demanding. It can be very physically demanding, whereas this new sport would be less physically demanding and it would suit an older generation and suit younger as well. It, it just it increased participation in the sport as well. You right. know, and it increased, we can accommodate the numbers that are here in the club as well. Yeah, so if, if a family that, that maybe one or two members might play tennis and, and it could be three or four people that wouldn't, that might attract those people and, and you'd, you'd end up that you'd have a, a larger family membership of the club. Yes, exactly, yeah. So it would be, it's, it's a new sport and it's really taken off, so we're, we're hopeful that we'll be granted the funding and go ahead. We'll be one of the first clubs in Ireland to have a I think there was something in the news there recently, uh, or the, the government were, were encouraging people to to look at, at, at that as a as an activity within an area. So obviously you're ahead, and um, you, so you're in a position to move on it if you're successful with the funding. We are, yeah, we yeah we have the town commission applied for, and it's been granted. We just if we're successful with the funding, we can go ahead, no problem. And I think when the court is in place, if we do get it. When it is in place, it can be used as like practice walls as well for, for, for tennis players. So if you come in and you like you're on your own, you might get in here or whatever, you can take right. a couple of balls up to the paddle court and use Yeah, so you see on a golf course where you'd have a putting range and a driving range, it's yeah, basically exactly. be something similar for, for people who either if they wanted to warm up, if there's some important um, game coming yeah, exactly. up on. If you could do five, ten minutes hit it against the, the new paddle wall to get ready for your game or whatever, you know. But I just think basically the more activities you have in a club, more interest in the club is, you know. Yeah. So apart from the things that you mentioned earlier about the, the, the those um, outside of the club activities, this is something extra within the club that that um, you allow more people to participate and feel at home in the club. Yeah, exactly. Now it might be everyone's cup of tea. People might love it. Certain people will like it. Certain people won't. But it's not, if, like if it was there, it'd be fantastic. You know, if it's opening up a completely new door to people, um, you have a tennis club and then you have this paddle paddle court as well, so I mean it would definitely encourage people to come up and join the club, hopefully. 
Right, right. And now you're ideally situated within the, the, the heart of the town. Uh, how would your membership would would uh, go out to the, some of the, uh, the, the the villages around the area, or you know, you're open to, to getting people from from a, a reasonable geographical area. You would be, oh yeah. I mean, the location. Everyone says it comes down, um, particularly when it comes down to our tournaments over summer. They they all say how, you know, we've park in here. We're right slap bang in the middle of the town, so you can come, you can play your game, you can go down to town for a stroll, for a bite to eat, or whatever, and uh, come back up. It's winning. Like so, some of the clubs around the country are are basically in the country, and it's it's hard to, you know, when you visit the club, you end up staying in the club. Whereas here, you have the opportunity to walk around town and take in some of the town as well. So. Well, that's excellent, uh, Benice and, and Carl. Uh, before we go, you know, back to Louise in the studio, your contact details, uh, if it was possible, to, to, so that new members from looking at all about sport would be able to make contact with you? Basically, we're up online at the moment. Uh, the website is cabinlawtennisclub.ie and all the information there that you need to know about uh, joining the club or coming up to see the club or getting in contact with any mem or members of the club. It's all on the website, so just check that out and you'll find it all there. And Bernice, was there anything that you would like to say before we just wind up? Yeah, if there's anybody out there interested in coaching, the details are on the website. But we have a very young member here, who, Gail Anderson, and she has started a coaching programme here in the club for juniors and for seniors. So if there's anybody out there that would like you know, some senior coaching, just get in touch with myself or on the website. Her the details are on the website. There. So that will, will, will further enhance the development within the club and, and so people will be able to relate to, to, to um, the coach and, and, um, and so that would be available even at times when, when there wouldn't be games on so somebody make arrangements. Absolutely. She normally runs the coaching in four week blocks but she can also take you know, individual lessons if they were just once off or she could see you know, two weeks in a row. Everything's very flexible. You know, it's just well, that's, that's great. So, uh, Bernice and, and Carl, thanks. As you can see, Louise, uh, there's exciting developments ahead on Cavan Lawn Tennis Club and we hope to visit them again. So, it's back to you in the studio. That brings to an end All About Sport for this week from the top of the town studios, Conley Street Cavan. I will be back again next Wednesday evening at the same time to bring you more sport on cavantv.com. A huge thanks to the Cavan Lawn Tennis Club for taking the time to speak to us on the programme this evening. All About Sport was produced by Brian Daly and Michael Goldricht and the show was directed by David Van Standen. If you want your sport featured on the programme, send an email to drumlinmedia at gmail.com. Stay with cabintv.com as up next is our weekly music show, The Green Room, presented by Paul Cox. Until next Wednesday at 7, it's goodbye from me, Louise O'Reilly.